crispy. Yeah. These, I think they're funfetti or, or cake batter or whatever pop tarts or crack. Straight crack. Anyway, let's bring it back to 789. I bomb atomically. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. Haven't done this in a while. I'm going to kind of go back to the roots. And this video is going to be the making of this dial. So I got hit by somebody who had uh, gotten a dial from me before. And he wanted some Young Avengers type dial. So he sent me some reference pictures. And we settled on working from these three. So the floor. Uh, oh, well, that's graded. I'm not going to. So I already created that using my trusty circular tool. Someone will correct me. I just don't know the, the correct name of this or it's not coming to my head right now. So what I did is I just, you know, kind of uh, use the tool like you're supposed to use a tool. But the good thing is that that pencil uh, carved into the dial pretty good or into the foam pretty good. So I just went with that. And we'll just cover this hole up and we'll do some more of these designs uh, here. And then we'll work on... Uh, he wants this back wall with this door and that'll be in that corner there and then we're also going to work on a platform as well that'll sit here somewhere all right man so one of the reasons i got away from doing these type of videos is just because you know i want people to kind of use their imagination and i want people to to create dials based on on their research and and I, although it's it's really cool to go to uh, a dial maker's youtube channel and kind of see what they're doing and emulate what they're doing uh, it should be more about just picking up tips. But, you know, whatever. Here we are. I'm going to see if I can do maybe five of these segments for two minutes each as I progress. And hopefully we'll keep this video under 12 minutes, under 13 minutes at the very most. All right, y'all. And here's part one. And in a se segment two, I'll have, like, all the measurements and a little more work. All right, y'all. Okay, so uh, I almost forgot to record a little more process. This will be uh, the second segment. And uh, I'll go into a little bit of what I'm doing here. And then uh, the next time you see this dial, it will be black. And I'll talk a little bit about what my idea is for painting the dial. So real quick, as I was about to install something here, I wanted to give you guys uh, the quick background on how I do it. So we have, this is the floor of the dial. And what I decided to do is I'm going to put a kind of a graded floor look. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I cut out these uh, these uh, laying around, usually the corner of, of like fancy looking dials or rooftops. But anyway, I'm just going to use them here so they can hold up this mesh. Now, the problem is that even if I have something holding the mesh there, 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 and I'm going to put some uh, foam uh, sheets here, it's still, I always feel like it's still a little soft. So what I wanted to do is just kind of put a bar kind of in the bottom. So what I did is I took my Dremel and I kind of Dremeled uh, a hole here and guessed because <laughs> I just kept Dremeling. I was like, all right, this looks wide enough and it actually is. It's perfect. It works out. So uh, now I'm going to do that to the other side. These pieces will be from here to here. And what they'll do is, uh, again, from here to here. I guess it's having here, having this. Uh, I'm sorry. But this is going to be there. The smaller piece is going to be on the side. The, uh, the longer dowel rod is going to be right in the middle, and it'll give this floor stability. So that was the idea uh, behind that. Hi, y'all. Yes, All right, man. I was supposed to. Let me put the volume down on this. This is uh, I'm catching up on the ACBA podcast. Uh, I was supposed to show you guys this dial once it was painted black but i'm so used to just getting to it that uh i didn't show you guys so uh real quick i'll show you guys where it's at right now as i'm this should be painted by the time that i'm done today uh all right so uh let me take this card off i'm gonna leave those three cards on there so that i don't have to all right and the door is right here we'll just the door real quick sorry about that guys i should have been prepared i just started recording so anyway i just wanted to get uh the the look before i start painting it so what i did over here is uh i i, I don't have the screen i'll show it in the next segment but what i created is using vellum paper i think is how you say it i printed out some scenes and then this is going to be like a tv and it, 
or a, a screen. Then the, the, the paper sits here with the scene and then it can get lit up from the back and so it should look good. This is gonna be the little, uh, he wanted it so that, you know, they climb a little, a couple stairs and they, they're on that platform, they can look at what's happening on TV. So this is what it's looking like right now. This is my first, uh, you know, sci-fi style dial so it's uh it's challenging for me man I, I hope it comes out okay i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna see what it looks like once i give it uh some more paint but this is where we are so far and the next segment should have this completely painted or at the very least uh getting ready for airbrush if airbrush is what i'm gonna use because i'm not even sure at this point i uh and i'm out hi right, folks and we have finished this sci-fi inspired diorama uh so i don't remember if i said any of this so forgive me if i'm repeating some of this i got contacted by someone who's gotten a dial from me before and he wanted something a little more sci-fi-ish and he wanted it specifically uh well not specifically for you know his dc uh some some particular dc figures but you know just to use it in general so what he did is he showed me he sent me Oh man, about 10 reference pictures actually. And what I did is I just borrowed pieces from each reference shot. So for example, the design here was from a, a reference shot. And uh, these bat the, the walls in general, just kind of the style. That was all uh, from those reference shots. The door uh, was kind of just my creation. But, you know, it has that, that sci-fi feel to it. Uh, he wanted a platform, he wanted a platform, and he also wanted kind of a screen, uh, so we were able to create that. This is, this comes with, so the dials, the dojo dials that I've created that have those mesh screens, or, or not mesh screens, but those, uh, those screens, this piece comes with it, so I just cut it out and actually worked the foam around it, uh, to kind of give it that sci-fi feel and also he's able to put lights under here and it'll kind of light up that feature is also available here so this is uh just uh sewing mesh and what i did is again incorporated it into the floor you can see the bar there for support and then uh in a little bit i'll show you guys how it looks when it's lit up from the bottom but uh real quick uh this was 18 inches across i want to say it was uh 12 inches tall 12 inches tall and uh, 11 inches deep and what i did is part of uh part of this experiment and let me shut this light off so you guys kind of now real quick let me just show you there's a light from behind that's uh illuminating the vellum paper uh and then you can see there uh the effect of just like batman punching superman uh, I got Adam Warlock, who is a six-inch Toy Biz Marvel Legends figure, uh, standing in for scale. So the cool thing is that he's able to light that screen up. He's going to be able to light the floor up. He's going to be able to light up this if he wanted to. Uh, created a... A lot of times, whenever I get a packaging... Uh, you know, whatever plastic pieces come out that they look like I can use in a dial at some point in the future, I usually grab them up. So this was a perfect one where you can kind of just lay your hand there. And it's a hand scanner pretty much in order to allow you to go into that next room. So for part of uh, this this TV or, you know, this, this screen, I also created four uh, or four total. So three more. So you can, they're all interchangeable. So you have, uh, you know, you kind of have the globe. Or not the globe, but like the the moon, or I'm not sure. Uh, you have just Superman, and again, this is uh, vellum paper, so uh, you know you can put light behind it, and it'll just light up. And then we have just a basic screen of uh, the world, I guess, the the world map. So he has the option of of interchanging uh, any of these. And uh, having a different scene all the time. Uh, you can, the stairs are movable, and just so you guys can kind of see the guts of it. It's just uh, insulation foam uh, cut in half, and uh, that same mesh put there. Um, just take Adam Warlock out, and he can 
take this out as well so you can do some other scenery or other shots where you don't necessarily have uh, this part in terms of this part itself no back legs uh, this this section that I stuck on the wall is what's supporting it from the back uh, which gives a good weight support if you're gonna put some heavier figures I always mention the Hulk or you know bigger figures like that but it gives a good weight support these legs are permanent they're balsa wood uh, so they're glued in permanently these rails can be taken out uh, it would be too these would be too thin to, to keep them permanent so this is just a I think it, uh, it is balsa wood I'm pretty sure it's balsa wood just kind of that squared balsa wood so let me just show you guys how it looks uh, lit up from the bottom all right, so what I did is I just prop, pretty much propped it up under the dial, and I just wanted you guys to see kind of the effect of uh, the light coming from underneath. So what uh, he's going to have to do, the person who bought this dial, what he's going to have to do is he's going to find have to find something to kind of put underneath the dial to lift it up and then put a light underneath. But what it does is it gives it a really good effect. For example, if I had Adam Morlock sitting there, you can get kind of a, a different type of, uh, of lighting added on, but... Uh, that would be able to light a shot pretty well for the most part. My suggestion is also for uh, the client to pick up some vellum paper or some other diffusing type paper that you can put right onto the uh, the light. But I definitely like the the uh, the effect that it has. And again, this is something new. Uh, always trying to think of new new and different things to do with uh, with these dials, just so that they have a, a longer life in terms of. The possibilities for pictures so this is just another example of of trying to come up with something you know and again just the light is lighting it from underneath and it's just illuminating and it's it's looking pretty solid uh, if I was to move this for example you can still set up a shot it's not perfectly uh, centered the way it was intended to be but that's okay because you know this is your world and, and what have you so or you can even put a light kind of right under here uh, <clears throat> let me see if there's anything I forgot. For the most part, these are all uh, foam sheets. So these are cut pieces of foam sheet. Uh, this does have a little. And let me just let me just take this light out and show you guys so I can kind of see how how this uh, how the screen works in terms of interchanging with these. So the way it works is it has this little this little top here. So you just remove that. It's just some foam, and it's just meant to kind of uh steady the screen up a little bit so it's easy enough to take off and put on uh so that's what i did with that and that's it y'all uh any questions comments leave them at the end uh and we are audi 5000 and i'm out peace